everyone. Welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a scaly friend of ours because we are learning about the oh so wonderful and a bit prehistoric looking the crocodile. This is of course a very special listener episode dedicated to Sarah who wrote in via Instagram. This episode would not be possible without you Sarah so thank you so much for writing in and this podcast wouldn't be possible without each and every one of you out there listening and writing in each week. So if you want to learn about a specific animal, you can either follow the Instagram Relax with Animal Facts, or you can send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. I respond to each and every one of you uh, because I get so excited when I read uh, those new messages there. Some of you guys may have noticed that there was no episode last week. Well, basically, um, if there's a problem with my voice, I can't do the podcast. I only have one day in which I'm able to be free and record, and it was unlucky enough uh, or I was unlucky enough to have a very scratchy and raspy voice last week. Um, so if you guys um, notice that there is either a delay in upload or or whatever, I will always post an update on Instagram. So you guys can go follow that if you'd like. So we are going to go to another five-star review from kmarsh98. K Marsh 98 writes, so soothing. The narrator has an incredibly soothing voice, and I hope he gets as much out of making it as I do of listening to it. Well, K Marsh, that is a very, very wonderful uh, thing for you to say. I'm so glad uh, that you enjoy the show. And I have to say that um, I get so much out of making this podcast. I love animals, but um, the primary reason I do it is for is for you guys listening. So when I get those really uh, amazing messages from you guys, uh, I get so much from it, and I'm just so grateful uh, to be a part of your nightly routine or daily routine for some of you. If you want to leave a wonderful review like Kmarsh98 did, you are very much encouraged to do so. It helps the podcast grow so much just by taking that um, less than five minutes to do that. You can really, really uh, help the show reach some more people who want to relax right alongside each of us. And you guys provided me with so much good feedback over on Instagram. I had posted a story in which I was asking, how can I make the show better? If you guys want to also include any kind of feedback in the emails or, or whatnot, uh, you're also very encouraged to do that as well. But enough with the dilly-dallying. We are going to first just say where we got our facts from for this episode. So all of the facts are coming from one source, and that is ourplanet.com. Planet is spelled P-L-N-T. So if you want to learn more, I highly encourage uh, going to that website. I will include it in the show notes there so you guys can go and check it out for yourselves. So I want all of you to sort of scan your bodies and see where you're carrying some tension. You know, if we have a really tense body, it can be very hard to relax uh, properly. So some of you will carry tension in your head or your shoulders or your legs. Wherever it be, just try to realize where it is and then do your best to relax it as we go into this immersive experience with me, Steph Wolf, into the lakes and rivers of some of the world's most beautiful tropical habitats. The first fact of the show is that crocodiles are the biggest reptiles 
on earth. And saltwater crocodiles are the biggest ones of them all. They can grow up to 6.17 meters, which is just over 20 feet, and can weigh more than a ton. So these are definitely not something you would like to keep as a pet in your house. I know a lot of individuals out there like to have uh, lizards and different kind of things like that. But I think it would be best if we left the crocodile to their own devices there. So while saltwater crocodiles are very large, there is a species of crocodile known as the dwarf crocodile. And it is the smallest uh, currently living crocodile with a medium adult length of about one and a half meters, so just under five feet. And the maximum uh, recorded length for this species is about uh, 1.9 meters or six foot two. It's hard to imagine if you were to stand a crocodile upright that uh, you would be taller than it, but um, in the case of the dwarf crocodile, sometimes that might be a reality. So crocodiles are found in the tropical habitats of Asia, Australia, Africa, and the Americas as well. And they will normally live near lakes, wetlands, rivers, and sometimes saltwater regions like the saltwater crocodile that we learned about just a second ago. So you guys may have known already that crocodiles are closely related to dinosaurs, but what you may not have known is that they are also closely related to birds. So despite being classified as reptiles, uh, crocodiles and all crocodilians, which includes alligators, are more closely related to dinosaurs and birds than to most animals classified as reptiles. This is because birds are uh, oftentimes characterized as avian dinosaurs. So many researchers say that birds uh, descended from dinosaurs at one point or another. And crocodiles produce tears. So they really do produce tears. This is because while they eat, they will oftentimes swallow too much air, which will get into touch with the lacrimal glands. These are the glands that produce tears, and it will force tears to flow. But it's not actually crying. The term crocodile tears, if you've heard that before, refers to a false, insincere display of emotion, such as a hypocrite crying fake tears of grief. That is something that I very much did not know. So when crocodiles are crying, they're not crying because you hurt their feelings. They are um, sort of tearing up because of a, a strictly um, physiological process. So that is very cool to see where the term crocodile tears came from. I always love to learn the etymology of these kind of words and, and phrases. It's always, it's always very cool to, uh, to learn about. It is derived from an ancient anecdote that crocodiles weep in order to lure their prey, or that they cry for the victims they are eating. First told in the Bibliotheca by... Uh, Photios the I, who was the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople. This tale was first spread widely in the stories of the travels of Sir John Mandeville in the 14th century, and appears in several of William Shakespeare's plays. So one of you long-term listeners out there suggested that we do sort of a story segment there. Um, so for each animal we learn about, we learn about uh, a story that goes along with them, maybe maybe in myths or maybe things that have really happened in the past. So uh, we're going to be trying to do that on uh, future episodes. So I hope that you guys enjoy those little story times as well. And they can keep their jaw open underwater. 
This is because they have a valve at the back of their throat, allowing them to open up that jaw uh, quite easily when they're underneath the surface. And they have an average lifespan of at least 30 to 40 years. And in the case of larger species, of an average of 60 to 70 years. So pretty close to human life expectancy. And there are claims of some individuals exceeding 100 years of age, but of course, sometimes claims don't equal uh, strong evidence. Um, but some individuals have claimed it to be so. But on average, we see um, some of the lifespans going from 30 years old up to the maximum of 70, at least that science supports. Saltwater crocodiles have the strongest bite. One of the scariest crocodile facts is that the crocodile has the strongest bite force that has ever been measured. Paleobiologist Gregory M. Erickson and colleagues tested the bite forces of all 23 living crocodilian species. The strongest was the saltwater crocodile, this being sort of a, uh, an expected ordeal because they are so large. They slammed their jaws shut with about 3,700 pounds per square inch, that's PSI, or 16,460 newtons of bite force. So just for comparison's sake, let's see how strong this bite force is to the lion. The lion has a bite force of 1,300 newtons at the canine tips and just over 2,000 newtons at the carnassials. So we see a maximum bite force on average of about 2,000 newtons. While the crocodile, if we remember, has over 16,000 newtons of bite force. That is more than eight times the bite force of an average lion. So while I wouldn't want to know personally the bite force of a lion if it was wrapped around my arm, I definitely would not want to know the bite force of a crocodile in that same sense. But despite this enormous bite force, their muscles to open the jaw are extremely small and weak that a human can use their uh, bare hands to keep a crocodile's mouth closed. So this is interesting that the crocodile has such a strong bite force that it may have impacted their ability to open their, um, their jaws with some of the force that we see in other animals in the animal kingdom. So I'm going to take a drink of my tea here. If you guys are wondering, it is a wonderful chamomile. That is usually what I have. Even though I'm recording this in the morning, I love chamomile tea. And I'm drinking it with some honey that I got um, at a farmer's market, which is very, very delicious. So for those of you that are still awake here with me, um, if you have tea or water, you can uh, drink right along with me. So for those of you that are new out there, uh, you might be uh, wondering why I, uh, I feel it necessary to tell you about the tea I'm drinking. Well, it seems as though a lot of people out there, a lot of uh, our precious listeners out there, really enjoy... Uh, the little intermission to uh, hear me talk about what tea I'm drinking. And I always talk about on the show that eventually I would love to have my own tea company uh, or uh, my own brand of chamomile tea that uh, we can have so you guys can drink the same tea I'm drinking while you're listening to the show. Anyways, this is about crocodiles, not about tea. Let's press on. They have a very good night vision. Their night vision is good particularly because they are nocturnal hunters. 
So that word nocturnal just means that they do these processes at night, as opposed to diurnal, which is during the day. So they are mostly nocturnal hunters, but they will also sometimes hunt during the day. This, of course, depends on their need for sustenance and energy. And they have a unique heart. They have the most sophisticated heart in the animal kingdom and actively change the destination of blood that flows through it depending on their requirements. So mostly for my sake, because I'm not the brightest bulb, you are very, very welcome to research more about their heart uh, whenever you have uh, time, if you'd like to. So they carry their hatchlings in their mouth. One of the most interesting uh, facts, I think, is that they carry their babies to the water in their mouths. And baby crocodiles can make noises from inside their eggs before they hatch. The mother will hear their voices and then will dig up the eggs from the sand and take the hatchlings into the water. This is not something that we would think would be uh, in the mother's best interest because of the fact that if the mother wanted to, or uh, maybe even by accident, those eggs would be as good as gone. We're talking about 16,000 uh, newtons of bite force, and yet the mother carefully brings the eggs of its babies into the water. I think that's so amazing. They are very good swimmers as well. Their top swimming speed is about 15 kilometers an hour or just over 9 miles per hour. This might not seem very quick, but we have to take a few things into account. The first thing is, is that we can't compare it to the speed of land animals that run. Because, as we know, the resistance of water is very high in comparison to the resistance of air. The second thing being is that crocodiles, as we learned before, can weigh over a ton. So 15 kilometers an hour, or just over 9 miles per hour, can be very fast for an animal of this size. So the crocodile has webbed feet, which is not really used to propel them through the water because they will tuck their feet to the side when they swim and will use the power of their tails instead sort of as the engine to propel them through the water. Um, but the webbed feet instead will act almost like a rudder which will allow them to make fast turns and sudden movements in the water, or they can use it to push off and initiate the swimming process. Like other reptiles, crocodiles are cold-blooded. This will mean that they have a very slow metabolism, which allows them to survive very long periods without food, meaning that they can survive many months on a single large meal. So while we as humans can sometimes praise having fast metabolisms, in the animal kingdom, this can be something that can be vital to their survival, having that slow uh, metabolism. They're not as worried about staying in shape for uh, the summertime. Instead, they're worried about their survival strictly. Crocodiles do not have sweat glands, which will mean that they have to release heat some other way. And this particularly is why we can often see crocodiles sleeping with their mouths open. This is as a way of releasing heat while they sleep. And the crocodile, although they have a very, very big bite force, do not chew their food. Many large crocodiles will swallow stones, which will um, act as a kind of balance tool to balance their bodies or 
assist in crushing food, similar to the grit that is ingested by birds. So swallowing stones is not something that we want to do, but in the case of the crocodile, it can help the mechanical digestion process and also secondarily act as a balance tool, which is amazing. Crocodiles are amphibious. This means that they spend part of their time in the water and part of their time on land. So although the saltwater crocodile and American crocodile are able to swim out to sea, no species of crocodilians are truly considered marine animals. For the final fact of the show, we are going to learn about the word crocodile. Where does it come from? So the word crocodile has come from Middle English, from Old French, from Medieval Latin, uh, and even to Greek. So the Greek word crocodilos, which means worm of the stones, which is a very interesting kind of name and would be something that would be good uh, to meditate on and to sort of uh, try to figure out why they were called uh, worm of the stones. So thank you all so very much for tuning into this episode and for going on this journey with me um, as we learned about the crocodile. This was a very nice uh, episode. Thank you so much, Sarah, for suggesting it via Instagram. If you want to hear about an animal or learn about an animal on the show, you can write in to Relax with Animal Facts on Instagram, or you can write in as well to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. So again, if you want to support the show, you can follow the show on Spotify or wherever you listen, and you can leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It goes such a long way, and so many of you have been giving the show uh, just such nice reviews, and I love the fact that we can read them on the show together. If you want to support the show in another way, you can become a patron for just $1 to $2 a month, depending on how much you'd like to give to the show. Uh, Tessa just became a patron, so thank you so much to you, Tessa, and thank you so much to those of you who are patrons and have been for the past couple of months. It means the world, and it helps the show keep on going. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode because I sure did. And I look forward to seeing you on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.